Hello and welcome to this Astranti video. Now what you see in front of you is an extract from our P2 module on big data. Now this topic, it comes up in P2, but it also is going to come up in E1 and E3. So it's a big topic across SEMA, really important that you know what it is. And in this video, we are going to be running through what big data is, the features of big data, and the kinds of things that big data might be used for. Now, if you want to see more materials like this, you can head on over to the Astranti website, where we offer a full course of SEMA materials, including the one that you see on your screen right now. Now, I'll hand you over to our subject expert. There's more data in the world than there's ever been before, and it's coming from more sources than there's ever been before, and it needs to be more relevant, more reliable, more accurate than it's ever been before to gain a competitive advantage. It's important that organizations have systems in place that can analyze this vast amount of data. And that brings us on to the next section of this video, which looks at big data. And we're going to start by looking at the uses of big data, the Gartner's 4Vs, which is a very important model for you to learn. And then we'll also look at the big data processes and some additional uses of big data. And I'm going to give you an example of Walmart to kick things off. And I'm sure you're all aware that Walmart is an enormous American retail chain. And Walmart was examining lots of data in its databases, trying to find patterns between sales. And by using a data analysis system, they found that the sales of nappies and beer rose in the evening. And the reason for this was that people were going to a shop on the way home from work and they were purchasing nappies because they had a young baby at home. And while they were there, they thought, I'm going to buy myself some beer. And so this seems like a really dubious link, but actually there is logic to it. And so what Walmart did was then they decided to put the nappies and beer closer to each other within their stores. And as a result, sales of both actually increased again. So there is method in the madness here. They identified a link that to the naked eye you perhaps would never have seen and they used it to make a decision to change the layout of their shops or to move two products closer together. And as a result, sales of both items actually increased to a further extent. And this is the benefits and the value of using big data. So I'm gonna give you a formal definition of big data now. And big data describes volumes of data from a wide variety of sources that can be processed to produce useful information for a range of decision-making purposes. We're always coming back to this idea of being used for decision-making purposes. And uh, there's so much information out there and big data systems can be used to analyze all this information it has an almost universal application and there's always conclusions to be drawn from enormous amounts of data, but you have to have a system in place that can analyze it effectively. You can't just look at this information as an individual and draw these conclusions. You have to have a system in place that analyzes it effectively. So I'm gonna give you some examples of big data and how it's being used in the real world. So an example of this could be hospitals. And big data has been used by hospitals to monitor patient details. So monitors the treatment that they've sought, monitors how likely they are to need to come back into the hospital, how likely they are to take their medication, how likely they are to do their exercises, etc. And the whole purpose of this is to prevent readmission. And the more that they can do to prevent readmission in the future, the more money the hospitals will save in the long run. Consumer goods companies, they will monitor the vast worlds of Facebook and Twitter 
And as a result, they'll be able to gain insight into consumer behavior, the kinds of things that they enjoy, the kinds of things that they like, the kinds of things that they purchase, and what times of year they purchase it at. And also get some insight into what individuals are saying about their products. If a consumer goods company asks a particular customer about their product while they're in the shop or something like that, it will be quite formal, whereas they get a real insight if they look at what they are posting on social media. And also governments as well may use all this data systems to monitor crime rates. Rather than just looking at the number of crimes, they'll also be looking at whether they're increasing, whether they're decreasing, what areas they're increasing, decreasing, and also for changes in society as well. Is there a direct link between increased poverty and increased crime and being able to link all these different things together? And as a result, perhaps being able to solve crime at the source rather than just stopping it once it's already happened or punishing the offenders once it has already happened. That brings us on to a really important model to learn here, which is the Gartner's for these. And the problem with big data systems, as the name big data would suggest, is that it is big. There is so much information. And as a result, it becomes very, very difficult to store it effectively. It becomes very, very different to manage effectively and to ensure privacy, which is also very important. And so the Gartner's four V's looks at the four key challenges that organizations face when collecting all this information. And these four V's are volume, velocity, veracity, and variety. And we're going to look at each of these individually. And volume relates to the amount of data that there is. The amount of data that's coming from all these different sources. The more data there is, the increasing volumes of data means there's so much more to manage, so much more information than has ever been for. It needs to be stored and curated effectively. And it's also far harder to extract key information. If you get a database come in and there's 2 million lines of information on that database, it's very difficult to find the exact pieces of information that you need from that data set. So it's important you have systems in place that can analyze it effectively, that are adaptable and you can draw effective conclusions from it. Also looks at the velocity of it, the speed in which organizations are receiving data. And in this fast paced modern technological world, data can change very quickly. Information received today may not be useful tomorrow, may not allow you to take advantage of a situation tomorrow. For example, if a, a stock price decreases dramatically for a matter of minutes, because of some issue with the company that's then sorted out straight away afterwards. If you get that information within that few minutes, you can actually you can purchase those shares and then you can take advantage of the, the rebound and then you've made money. Whereas if you get that information in, in only enough time to be able to action it tomorrow, it's already too late. So the analysis must be carried out very, very quickly in order to make instant real-time changes make instant real-time decisions. Also, the variety of information is coming in from so many different data sets, coming from so many different sources in so many different formats. And this makes analysis far harder. If you're getting information on an IT system and then you get information on a different IT system, it's not all standardized so you can't upload it onto the same system etc you have to have systems that can sort information from many different sources if it's going to be effective and finally veracity and veracity relates to the accuracy of it it relates to uh, how reliable it is and of course this goes back to uh, the source that it comes from if you are purchasing data, you have to make sure that you're purchasing it from a reputable organization. If you are sourcing your own data, you have to make sure that people that are sourcing the data know what you're looking for and that they know what is good, accurate, reliable information. 
And you also have to think about customer reviews as well. And you've got customers out there that will have a product and it'll actually work and it'll be completely fine. But then they're really pedantic over certain issues and they, oh, I'm going to give it one out of 10 stars because, you know, the, the delivery driver said that he was going to arrive at 11 o'clock and he arrived at 11.01. So I'm really unhappy about that. That's not really a true reflection of the quality, a true reflection of the general populace's attitude towards your product. So the data can be unreliable. So you have to make sure that you've got systems in place that will account for perhaps a degree of unreliability and a degree of inaccuracy and allow you to draw effective conclusions from it still. So for example, you may have a system that puts a certain score to a particular source of information and that affects the weighting of the relevance of that information. And if you've got something that's very reliable, then it's weighted very heavily. If you've got something that's unreliable, it's weighted quite lightly. And with that, we have come to the end of the video, unfortunately. Now, if you want to see the full course, you can visit the Astranti website where you can sign up for a free membership, which is going to give you access for one week to the full course and a mock exam. Now, we update this channel twice a week, so make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more SEMA content in a similar vein to this video. And now in addition to that, you can find us on social media. Our links will be in the description below as well as on screen. And you can also join our Facebook study group where you can ask questions and discuss the course content with your fellow students. Now, we hope to see you in a future video. Thank you very much.